Yo, 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 guys, welcome back again today. Today, we're going to be talking about composer Edmund Dede. Edmund Dede was a composer and musician born on November 20th, 1827 in New Orleans, Louisiana, USA. His parents would move from the French West Indies or the Caribbean to New Orleans, Louisiana. His parents were free Creoles of color who moved around 1809. His father was a bandmaster in the local military group and taught Edmund his first music lessons. Edmund was introduced first to the clarinet, but eventually moved to the violin. He would soon be known as a child prodigy in the community. He would continue to practice and eventually went under the teaching of Constantine de Burge, a free man of color. Sometime after, Edmund would study under Italian-born La Voco Gabacci of the St. Charles Theater. Edmund is thought to be one of the earliest publishers of music in the city and took theory class from French-born Eugene Priost and New York-born black musician Charles Richard Lambert. Charles Lambert was also a conductor of the Philharmonic Society. Opera in the 17 and 1800s in America was looked at as pop music. People would sing or hum composers' music while they did their everyday things. In modern times, to most people in the United States, composed music in the opera is looked at as being bougie. During the time, most people who would go to the opera halls were located in the North. New Orleans, on the other hand, was an exception. The first show that would be held in New Orleans was in 1796. After this show, shows would start to pop up all over the city. With heavy French influence in New Orleans, it is believed that French settlers brought their culture of French and Italian operas with them. In the mid-1800s, this would go to over 200 opera productions a year. It became so popular that some shows would open on the same night at the same time in New Orleans and in Paris, France. These houses would be open to every citizen, but were segregated. One area for servants, one for slaves, one for everyone else, and one for free people of color. The tickets for seats were one quarter for low seats and one dollar for the best seats. The only place that was not segregated was the orchestra pit. In this pit, you could find many trained black players from the Caribbean, the Americas, and Europe. This group of free men of color would go on to create the Philharmonic Society of 100 Men in 1840. This group would perform in their own theater and main director was Constantine de Burge. Due to racism and hostile conditions, he would leave for Mexico. At the age of 21, in 1848, he would arrive in Mexico. In Mexico, Edmund would meet Henry Hertz, who was of French descent. Hertz would speak of how blacks in Louisiana had good taste in music and love for music itself. It is believed that Hertz would talk Edmund into applying for the Paris Conservatory. He would surely return to New Orleans in 1851. His musical piece would appear in a concert. The piece is known as Mon Pure Cure, which means My Pure Heart, and was found as the oldest sheet music by a man of color. Edmund would pick up work as a cigar maker to move to Europe. After saving enough money, he would move, though, in 1864, his famous symphony, Quasimodo Symphony, was performed. His piece was performed by a fellow black musician named Samuel Snare Jr. And he performed Edmund's piece in the New Orleans Theater. He would not be in attendance to see this though. Edmund would go on to receive his education and served as the orchestra conductor at the Alcazar Theater in France for 28 years. Once he arrived in Belgium, Europe, he would make his way to Paris. He would enter the Paris Conservatory for advanced musical study. 
His audition would be a success and he was accepted. Was attending the Paris Conservatory as well at the time. He was also taught by famous French violinist and teacher Jean Allard. He then moved to different French cities. He would have his big success while touring. He would move to Bordeaux, France and conducted for the Alcazar Orchestra. Good trade relations between Bordeaux and Louisiana led to a large number of free black people settling in Bordeaux, France. During his years in the city, he went on to become a very popular and prolific music composer. He also wrote operas, ballads, overtures, and over 250 songs and dances. Most of his works are stored at the National Library of France in Paris. Though he was popular in France, his work back in the States were still not as known. His Quasimodo symphonies was one of the only works that were even performed once in the States. In 1864, Edmund would marry Sylvie Liflat. She was a French woman from high society in France. They would go on to have two sons, and his son Eugene also went on to become a musician and composer. In 1893, Edmund would return to New Orleans. The ship that he was on would be hit by bad weather, and the wrecked ship was forced to dock in Texas. During his event, his prized violin was destroyed. After acquiring another inland, he would go on to perform in different cities. He would play his last song, Patriot Is Me, with his violin in his home city of New Orleans. He would perform this as a last performance in the United States. He would then move back to France due to the treatment, slavery, and prejudice that still existed in the USA, but seemed to have calmed down in France. He would die in 1903 and has over 34 publication works. One of his most famous works in America is his composed musical piece called Chicago, which he made in 1892. He also had a place with his music in the Hogan Jazz Archive Collection at Tulane University in New Orleans, Louisiana. So you guys, today we learned about a classical composer that I think most don't know and I think that he should definitely be known. Please like and subscribe, turn on the bell notification down there so you'll get all my videos. Like all my social media, which is Africa Network, which is Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, SoundCloud, and Facebook. Also soon, I will have a TikTok as well, so look out for that. So just go ahead and try to add me on TikTok because I'm pretty sure by the time this video is out, I would have made a username. And so add me on TikTok as well. And always remember to love each other, always learn from each other, and always understand that we're not just one thing. We've always been multiple different things. Once again, we are not just one thing. We are not a monolith. We are different things, and we come in different packages, speak different languages, and do different things. And until next time, guys, peace. Keep playing. One love.